what's up guys we are back i have no idea what youtube just did <laughs> you first again jeffrey yeah unfortunately i have no idea literally like youtube kicked me off because it said that in a message it says uh, youtube server disconnected you and i had to basically log in uh, restart my whole computer, log back again, create a new live stream because the the one that I've had, it's completely gone now. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what's what's popping, NYP? Um, okay, so uh, I was answering. I remember somebody's question about gtii and uh that's when i got cut off gtii and finger um so as i was saying i'm keeping a close look on them i'm not a person who invests in over-the-counter stocks and expects squeeze potential like to hold if i'm and again this is not financial advice this is just a question to me and i'm answering it um when I get into an any over-the-counter uh, position or stock, um, it's always to get in and to get out. That's what I do. GTII, if you, if, like, you know, it did a really good, uh, last I remember, it was like around 125% uh, surge. Um, over the past five years, it's been over, like, what, 30,000% up from, like, four cents to where it's at now in the four or five bucks. So again, um, to each, I guess their own, they, there is potential for every stock, obviously, but, um, um, I, I don't do over the counter stocks and stay on them for a while. So, um, uh, so yeah, with that being said, that's the answer to that one. Uh, I think it was Alan Kamaski that asked me the question. <laughs> so this is going to be huge guys for Twitter. This deal, if it goes through Friday, as Musk is saying, this is going to be huge. Very huge. Um, I anticipate that it's going to be... It's going to be it's going to be groundbreaking. We'll see how like it will affect the stock for both uh, either Tesla or for Twitter. I probably uh, Tesla might get uh, a little bit hurt, but again, Tesla is very down. Um, Tesla and another... A couple of other stocks like for me i'm huge right now on snapchat and you know ver depends on what where everybody else's uh, mind on that is but that's a stock for me right now that i am slowly beginning to accumulate in because the dip is like very 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 hard and it's 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 just like a big 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 it has big potential as far as for down the line now it's not something where i'm thinking that it's going to be something soon although i would love it to um but where it's at right now ah worst comes to worst worst case scenario the snapchat gets by bought out by meta or google or some or alphabet or whatever and then next thing you know um it'll be a quick flip so uh, depending on if, th if that was to happen. So I don't see anything bad. This tech, yeah, they got routed last week, which I like. Because again, now I'm more confident buying where it's at right now. I just don't see Snapchat being much less than this. Like, I, I, I don't see it being five and under. Um, and I certainly don't see it going anywhere. So we'll see. Time will tell. This is just one of those other things. Yeah, that's what's on my radar right now. Snapchat is one of them. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Spy testing intraday highs again. Yes, you guys remember it was like a week and a half ago on that last live? Probably not even then. Where I said, I see the 380s, perhaps the 90s, maybe maybe just maybe you see the 400 it's very possible with the spy um but at least we are where we at and this is amazing for for me because we know that nothing have changed 
in, in, in the markets. We know that the markets are still what they are. We know that inflation is high. We know that the recession talks and depression is looming just right around the corner. This is exactly how markets pump so they can be very lucrative to short and dump eventually. Again, not a financial advisor. We will see. But I love it when stuff like this are happening because the next rate hike, what is supposed to be November 2nd, uh, it should be, it should be, it should be, it should be like something really interesting because I think November 8th, we got the AMC earnings for Q3. Uh, those are going to be very interesting as well. Um, so we, we, we're going to, we're going to fall. You're going to see a whole lot of things about this one. For me, it's about showing everybody that in the midst, amidst all the confusion, since everybody's doing AMC every day, AMC, 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 AMC every day, and you're watching, watching the shills left and right, and now you're watching YouTubers that are also flipping. I've, I've seen a couple now that are flipping on the movement, saying whatever stuff because of Ape, I just want to put the dots where they belong so that everybody can see or make their decision, obviously, uh, based on their own uh, best information. Now, we're a family in here. So when I'm speaking, I'm speaking to the family. I'm not speaking to uh, just all stock investors or whatever. They're all welcome. They're all welcome to listen. But most investors, if they're not meme stock investors, they're going to be looking down on the meme stock, kind of more like a hater shill. Uh, not all, but most. So I'll put it this way. For me, I'm going to share exactly what keeps my thoughts and my uh, conviction very strong on the whole movement and then why my money is on these uh, stocks, whether it be at AMC or GME. And, you know, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. So we covered the whole uh, news about the Elon Musk uh, situation, closing down the uh, agreement or to close down the deal with um, Twitter. Let me just get this fixed up. Perfect. Look at all these lines. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Do you have any questions? My lips are sealed. <laughs> Javi the Great. How are you, brother? You're not late. You're actually on time. Uh, the other uh, stream got cut short unfortunately we don't know exactly what it was but it was from youtube's side another thing to look at they just announced that there's the u.s consumer agencies to move forward with open banking now just so you would know this is not breaking news uh, open banking is basically so that consumers can get access to liquidity uh, more so what they're talking about is that your data is going to be more shared now securely around so when you start getting more spam or scam calls uh soon here when they get this thing kicked off this was just reported like 50, 20 minutes ago uh when they get this thing kicked off don't be surprised if you start getting 10 15 scam or spam calls a day uh wanting you to uh open up a or to share your opinion, or maybe perhaps open, uh, give them, give them your credit card uh, numbers, so that they can make sure that your hack doesn't go through. <laughs> Pop Loco, what's up, brother? And welcome back, Adrian. Mikey J, look, the goat is here. <laughs> All right. You see the entire market today is moving up. 
based on nothing new. Um, they're saying that because of the earnings and all that stuff, we do got quite big earnings this week. We got uh, Apple coming up soon. I think tomorrow or the day after. We had Alphabet also this week. Uh, we got a lot of big, 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 big. I think GE reported yesterday as well. Um, I am out of the loop on the other stuff. I'm not looking to play any of these other plays. Uh, maybe Apple, though. Uh, I know Apple had a lot of shortage in uh, supply in the supply chain. Apple also have been thinking and they've been doing cutting down many, many of their workforce. Uh, and I think their their target is to go for 20 percent less. So we'll see how that will go according to the next earnings and all that stuff. But that's a huge one to play for me. And I'm going to play some options on that. And I'm anticipating that it's not going to be. Uh, the greatest of news however with how the market is pumping up right now uh you know artificially i'm gonna go ahead and probably do some uh strangles or straddles uh on that one so we'll see we'll see what what, what will pop up as i get closer probably i'll make that decision tomorrow um let me see <laughs> no one likes spam <laughs> You're going to get a call from, uh, I'm going to get a call from Jeffrey. <laughs> hey, sir, there's been an attempt to hack your Amazon account. Would you like to, uh, you know, <laughs> give us, give me your credit card numbers so that we could go ahead and remove the hack, <laughs> put a lock on it. <laughs> Much love, brother. Uh, I'm messing with you. Mrs. Chase, good afternoon. Nice to see you in here. All right. Let's see what else. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is right here. Let me share the screen first. This one. What you see in front of you is the new way and this is what i was talking about on the weekend this is the new way of war right here and i'm gonna get into an article that i'll read over to you now to show you why this picture is how we battle overseas threats or obviously uh to stay in dominant in domination mode uh this is the best tool that we have because we implemented it many 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 years ago backed it up with the oil the, the make it the uh american dollar and now we you know you hear a lot of news about saudi arabia uh cutting down uh you know through opec their oil um delivery and their amount of oil which means more higher gas prices uh soon to come but in the same time there is reports as of yesterday to to say that the Saudi the Saudi Arabian regime is actually intent, in, intending or met with South Africans uh, South Africa's president, and they he himself the South African president have shared in a press conference after shortly after that he and uh, the, the Saudi Arabians have this very 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 uh, big desire of joining the BRICS. If you guys remember what the BRICS unification was, was it was between Russia, uh, well, it stands for the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And Saudi Arabia want to be number six. And apparently he also, according to the, uh, to the South African president, that there's also a numer numerous, uh, a number of other countries that are also interested in joining that coalition now why might that be uh, this picture right here explains it all but let's read this article right here so that you can see the United States wakes what we are with millions of talking about 
So how does how the surge in U.S. dollar is making it almost impossible to afford anything in countries around the world? Now you're about we're about to see. Let me see first. If there's any questions in here? Okay, we're good. So we can dive into this. So as you can see here, it says the cost of living. And let me double check, making sure you guys can see. Yep, you guys can see. So the cost of living in Cairo has soared so much, so much, that security guard Mustafa Gamal had to send his wife and one-year-old daughter to live with his parents in a village 70 miles south of Egyptian capital to save money. I mean, imagine, imagine, like, imagine these conditions here with us. Like, see, these things, we're not used to stuff like that here, you know, at least for the overall majority of the nation, you know. Uh, I'm not saying that we have no poor here or we don't have any rough situations. Of course, there's rough situations everywhere in the world with people, different individuals, but the overwhelming majority do not have to deal with this kind of mindset or this kind of stuff where like you have to send your wife um and your newborn to like 70 80 90 whatever 100 miles away so that it can be cheaper so they can live with your parents in a village <laughs> while you're working two jobs so like in here gamal 28 this man is not an old guy this is a younger person stayed behind working two jobs sharing an apartment with other young people and eliminating meat from his diet the prices of everything have been doubled he said there was no alternative see that's also another thing that we are also not as exposed to can you imagine people saying oh i can't eat like people would say i am eliminating meat out of my diet for being a vegetarian or vegan to becoming that but not because they cannot afford the meat or they can't have, uh, you know, meat in their diet. Um, it's a matter of choice for us here. We thank the Lord at all times, right? <laughs> so around the world, people are sharing Gamal's pain and frustration. An auto parts dealer in Nairobi, this is another place in Kenya now, a seller of baby clothes in Istanbul and a wine importer in Manchester, England. So this is not just happening in one country where its currency is devoured completely like the, uh, like the Egyptians' currency or even Turkey's lira. No, they, this, is, this is happening just about everywhere. I mean, just not too long ago, uh, the British pound was literally almost on par with the U.S. dollar, which is, which is like unheard of. Um, let's see, where did we get here? And all have the same complaint a surgeon US dollar makes their local currencies weaker, contributing to skyrocketing prices for everyday goods and services. This is compounding financial distress at a time when families are already facing food and energy crunches tied to the Russia invasion of Ukraine. You're probably wondering in your head, some of you are probably, why, so why is our dollar going up surging, making them weaker? Well, you're about to find out and I'll even evaluate on it, excuse me, evaluate on it as we go. A strong dollar might makes a bad situation worse in the rest of the world, says Iswar Prasad, professor of trade policy at Cornell University. Many economists worry that the sharp rise of the dollar is increasing the likelihood of a global recession sometime next year. Um, I believe that they're correct about this. Um, it could be sooner. I think it could be a little bit sooner, but I, I think it's like when they say sometime next year, I feel like it's going to be much sooner next year. If that's if it pushes even to that. The dollar is up 18% this year, and last month hit a 20-year high according to the benchmark ICE US dollar index, which measures the dollar against the basket of key currencies. The reasons for the dollar rise are no mystery. To combat soaring uh, US inflation, the Federal Reserve has, 
has raised the benchmark short-term interest rate five times this year and is signaling more hikes are likely to be led to higher rates and a wide range of U.S. government and corporate bonds luring investors and driving up U.S. currency. By the way, guys, I'm going to tell you why this is, and I have another tab over here. You'll, I'll open it as soon as I finish with this article to show you why uh, this is going according to our plan, like step by step. Of course, many would have loved the squeeze or the short squeeze much, much, much long ago. But in reality, there are many other factors that are playing. We're talking about big money here. We're not talking about, you know, some sort of one man's or one person's dispute. No, this is a whole movement on an entire market, uh, let alone, obviously, the most shorted stock possibly on the mark in, in, in the globe which is amc uh, and and we're and I, I will show you even more and more as i i will break it down more and more after we finish reading this article so that you could have all the details and then i'll link it all together so lowering investors and driving up the u.s currency most other currencies are much weaker by comparison especially in poor countries, the Indian rupee has dropped nearly 10% this year against the dollar. The Egyptian pound, 20%. The Turkish lira, an astounding 28%. Can you imagine this? Like, in the, just in this year alone. Imagine if, like, your own currency against the dollar dropped roughly 30%. Do you know how much money that is? That, that 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 is against you now that you have to pay back in debts that you owe uh the u.s because most countries have debts uh mostly to the u.s u.s goes in and says like okay we'll, we'll lend you money we'll lend you money we'll lend you money um and countries will take it in great times they will take it and they'll start doing investments and stuff like that but in times like this now they got to pay back these debts and they're not the only ones i'll share with you who are the, the other ones that also have to pay back these debts um and now since they're working with a different currency anytime they got to pay this debt imagine they got to pay it like let's say turkey in for example they got to pay 28 percent higher than what they did because now whatever money they have their lira is 28 percent lower so when do you when they convert it over to us dollar it gets 28 uh percent less to pay off that debt, they will have to pay with more of their money, a lot, 28% more with their money to what they really originally had at, in the prior times. Um, now, Silal Khalili, 60, sells infant clothing and diaper bags in Istanbul because he needs more lira to buy imported zippers and liners priced in dollars. He has to raise prices for the Turkish customers who struggle to pay him uh, in the much diminished local currency um we're waiting for the new year he said we'll look into our finances and we'll downsize accordingly there's nothing else we can do and that he is right about there's nothing else they can do rich countries aren't immune either in europe which has already teetering toward recession amid soaring energy prices one euro is worth less than a dollar for the first time in 20 years, and the British pound has plunged 18% from a year ago. The pound recently flirted with dollar parity after Britain's new Prime Minister Liz Truss announced huge tax cuts that ruled uh, financial markets and led to uh, the ouster of her Treasury uh, Secretary. Which, obviously, honestly, this will only <laughs> this up ease the, th the battle right now, but down the line is going to make it even worse way worse ordinarily countries could get some benefit from falling uh currencies because it makes their products cheaper and more competitive overseas but at the moment any gain from higher exports is muted because economic growth is sputtering almost everywhere so just think of it like this ab is living in thailand 
Thailand needs apples. App the apples don't grow in Thailand, hypothetically speaking. So that's an import. And there's two options. Things skyrocketed is either they stop the importing of apples, which obviously is not an option, or we just buy them for more because the supply chain now is more expensive. But what that means that to make my profit, I would have to induce that difference onto the consumer. Now, the consumer is already getting less. Their money is the same, but everything is more, which means the inflation is going to eat that up, which means people, just like Gamal earlier, had to uh, in, take out meat out of his diet. Well, <laughs> people will have to get apples out of their diet soon as well. Unfortunately, it is not a funny thing. It's just, when I smile like this, it's it's a sadness. It's more of a sarcasm of a laugh because we don't even we shouldn't even be here at this at this point or in this position. Um, it's unfortunate. It's just unfortunate. Certain one percent greed makes the other ninety nine percent, and it's their job to keep the other ninety nine percent underneath so that somebody's got to keep them lifted uh on the air so that they can stay above everyone a rising dollar is causing pain overseas in a number of ways it makes other countries imports more expensive adding to existing infla infla uh, inflationary pressures uh it squeezes companies consumers and governments that borrowed in dollars see there you go that's because more local currency is needed to convert into dollars when making loan payments. And just as I explained a little bit ago, in, for example, in Turkey's, in Turkey's example, 28% more expensive. Um, it forces central banks in other countries to raise interest rates to try and prop up their currencies and keep money from fleeing their borders. Uh, but those higher rates also weaken economic growth and drive up in unemployment. Uh, put simply, the dollar's appreciation is bad news for the global economy, says Capital Economics' uh, Arian Curtis. It is another reason why we expect the global economy to fall into recession next year. In a gritty neighborhood of Nairobi, uh, known for fixing cars and selling auto parts, businesses are struggling and customers unhappy with the Kenyan shilling down 6% this year. Um, and obviously everything is soaring so much more. And now the person is saying this has been the worst. Michael uh, Getchi, purchasing manager with uh, Shamas Auto Parts. Customers are complaining a lot. Well... They're not going to be, they're not the only ones and they're not going to be the only ones. Gyrating currencies have caused economic pain around the world uh, many times before during the aging financial crisis of the late 1990s. For instance, Indonesian companies borrowed heavily in dollars during boom times when uh, then were wiped out when the Indonesian rupee crashed against the dollar a few years late earlier. A plunging peso delivered similar pain to Mexican businesses and consumers. So, remember this guy? I know this is a hundred dollar bill. We can we can put one up for a dollar bill, but this one looks pretty. I love the the hundred dollar bills. So, who's what's what's the new age or the new way of weaponizing? Uh, and wars late these day, in this day, in this era, it's this. This is how we fight without even having to shoot a single or fire a single bullet. Um, in Manila, Raymond Mo, uh, Manaok, twenty nine years old, who drives the colorful Philippine minibus known as Chipney. I never knew about any of that, but nice to know complains that inflation and especially the rising price of diesel is forcing him to work more to get by. So basically, he's got to do more runs in order for him to keep the same money that he's used to get before. 
but eventually, obviously, at a loss, this is eventually going to only get worse. And unfortunately for this gentleman and many other people, they're going to see the uh, castrating effect real soon. In August, India imported 400 containers of almond down from 1,250 containers a year earlier, Meta said. So as you guys can see, bringing in this, like just this data right here, this India reported 400 containers of almond down from 1,250 just a year ago. This shows you that one, Remember the Apple example I gave you? They're doing the same thing. They can't not, not get any almonds or apples. But they're getting much less, even like a, a third of what they used to get. And yet that third is most likely just around the same price that they used to basically pay to import these products for about 1,250 containers. So you can only imagine how almond now, one is short in India. Not only that, but it's also, because it's much less, now they're gonna be, since supply and demand is completely different, there is demand, heavy demand, but no supply, um, not as much limited supply, which makes the prices skyrocket because uh, business individuals want to go ahead and also make their profit. They're not just going to import things so that they can pass them around. Although they, I, I think that's in a great idea to do something like that, but that's just not how the world rules. <clears throat> if the consumer is not buying, it affects the entire supply chain, including people like me, he said. Well, here's the thing. You see how this is a huge issue? This person is a supplier. He's looking at the consumer as his number one issue because the consumer is not buying. Well, look at the consumer's issue. The consumer is not able to buy, one, because their money is not the same anymore. In the same time, the prices are also not the same anymore. They skyrocketed, so they got to make some sacrifices. Uh, many of these households are just like similar to Gamal in Egypt. He took meat out of his diet. Most likely soon you'll see that uh, Indians are taking almond out of their diet. Um, it's, just a, it's just a fact of the reality. That's just how, how things are working. Kingsland's, Kingsland Drinks, one of the United Kingdom's biggest wine bottlers, was already getting squeezed by higher costs for shipping containers, bottles, caps, and energy. Now the rocket and dialer, dollar is driving up the price of the wine it buys from vineyards in the United States and even uh, from Chile and Argentina. Now, which like many countries rely on the dollar for global trade. Can you imagine tra specifically Argentina having to pay back its debt to the IMF, which is over $40 billion? And their currency is literally like underneath the underneath the ground underneath the dust um it, it's a debt i i don't see them ever have be being able to pay uh except with giving up their country it's just this is the world that we live in guys um kingsland has offset some of its currencies uh currency costs by taking out contracts to buy dollars at a fixed price but at some point these hedges hedges uh, run out and you have to reflect the reality of a weaker sterling against the U.S. dollar, uh, said Ed Baker, the company's managing director. Now, as you have uh, read with me this or heard me read this, here's the thing. The rising U.S. dollar also affects the major banks, central banks, similar to all these banks right here, like this one, like Goldman Sachs and them, because these banks are heavily relied up on the Federal Reserve ever since the pandemic, even before the pandemic happened. There is proof, and I showed it many, many months ago, to show 
the data of the uh, the the Federal Reserve Q1 of 2020 uh, doings, and apparently also their Q4 of 2019 of what they were doing. They were already rolling out bailouts. There was no COVID at all at that time, and Q1 data shows or actually portrays to us that they were already heavy. All these central banks, all these big banks, they were all heavy um, under the Fed's mercy at that point, completely over leveraged. One thing I want you to pay attention to is the SLR, not the SR, uh, the SLR that we are used to as far as the shorting uh, of two consecutive business days under 10%. No, the supplementary leverage ratio for banks. Supplementary leverage ratio is one of the requirements bank regulators ins instituted following the Great Recession of 2008. Essentially, this ratio requires a big bank to hold 5% of liquid capital for its total leverage exposure. That way, if the banking system does experience an extreme stress situation, or if people or institutions start taking their money out in large waves, Banks have capital to cover the losses. The anticipated, as we, as, as we read here, is 5%. Banks are expected to have at least 5%. Let me see some things. I see Monty Berger. How are you, brother? Frank, how are you, sir? And Pokes. Nice to see you in here, brother. Blue work is going great. <laughs> Hanzo, how are you, my friend? Always nice to see you. Thank you. Oh, Brother Frankie Muhammad, how are you, sir? Keep up the great work, Ak. Thank you, thank you. All right. So... So banks are basically are ever since 2008 are supposed to hold eight or five percent of liquid cash um, or capital so that they can withstand a storm if one was to happen or to form. Um, let's look at the list and where they at right now. This these are the banks. You got J.P. Morgan Chase is at six point eight percent. These are very close numbers, by the way, guys. And they could be wrong, but in the same time, I don't think they are because, again, if you look here, No, not this. We don't want to see the agreements. We don't see the operations. Because we know this right here, guys. We got everyday repo and reverse repo. And again, many months ago, I shared the whole diagram to you guys back when every single YouTuber at that time was talking about the short squeeze is tomorrow and the short squeeze is next week. Uh, I broke, and you can go back, check, fact check me. Go back many months ago, earlier to early this year, and check some of the lives and some of the videos that I was making that was explaining in detail how every entity in this whole entire financial system, including our brokers, were in on this whole thing. Um, and how the whole thing was put, put stitched together. And I believe that it was done back in January of 2021 when the initial squeeze initially happened and they had to suspend the trading of mini meme stocks on the list, including AMC and GME, spearheading that list. Um, and then in that suspension time, which was I think about four or five days, uh, or up to uh, over a week, I remember, something like that. Um, 
they have to come up with something. And I believe that that's what they were doing. Now, as far as Fed bailouts to these banks, these things were rolled out uh, prior to the even the pandemic happening in 2020. It was done in 2019, and there are proofs to show it. And I've showed it many, mon many months ago. Um, feel free. You can now it's ordinary news. You can look it up and you'll find it. Just look up uh, Fed's report Q1 of 2020. Um, you know what they did in uh, Q1 of 2020. Um, as you can see, we're over $2 trillion on, on repo and reverse repo operations. I remember when we were still less than 200 billion in 2021, early 2021, we were less than 200 billion. Look how much we have ballooned. And this is not even our record. Where do you think, what do you think that money is coming from or going to? Um, yeah, we're market easing and money easing for the markets. Sure. So back to here. So we're looking at these. Look at JP Morgan. It's a 6.8%. Very close to that 5%. Uh, Bank of America is a 7. Citigroup is a 6.7. That's extremely close. Wells Fargo not available. Well, Wells Fargo already uh, canceled all their customers' credit cards accounts. Uh, I remember last year and screwed over so many people, credit scores, and they stopped it. They were the first to be, I guess, over leveraged and they just were like, you know what? We want to be out of the madness uh, or under the dust. Goldman Sachs is at 6.7, and a lot of people, including me, are anticipating that that is going to be the next uh, financial institution to really make headwaves. Bank of New York Mellon at 8.2, and State Street at 8.3. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the way that we fight the war. So now these banks that we're looking at, these banks taking out all these also loans, as the feds continue to hike up rates, they took these loans when these markets were at a much damn near no uh, interest at all. Now to pay that same debt back, could you imagine a bank or an entity that has $50 billion loan? Just a $50 billion, uh, just a 50, you know, I'm just saying it like this, but <laughs> not for an individual person, but I'm talking about a major financial institution. So $50 billion, just a walk in the park for a big financial institution, loan that had almost zero uh, interest on it, now to pay it back January of this upcoming next year to uh, by then, I anticipate that we would have gone through another um, one or two, at least two, for, but at, for sure at least one more. Uh, whether the Feds want to pivot in December or not, I just think that they're going to at least hike it up one to two more times for sure this year. And I think by next January, when you're an institution that got $50 billion loan, just hypothetically speaking, and now you got you're paying your 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 payments back, but now you got all this interest rates that have been hiked up on it. You can only imagine that that fifty billion is now considered to pay it back. There is going to be similar to what sixty five billion when it's all said and done, or seventy, or even more. Um, will they have the money for that? Well, this is the video we're going to watch soon. It's a fun video, and I think it will also answer those questions because the only way they can do this, this is why I've always said to you guys, the only way that this whole thing ends and unravels and debacles is with a complete major depression. A recession is just a foreplay. Um, and an automatic government bailout that will be processed. Again, this is just my opinion. Is it going to happen? Possibly. 
um is it not gonna happen that's just my conviction on it and i think this is how it's all gonna end and it's been the same it's not gonna change because the game is the same it's just some little players and some little factors change with time that's it different faces but the game is still the same which is being over leveraged all the time over leverage yourself steal as much as you can and when the time comes make sure you're out of sight and you you tuck away and you hide away your uh your treasure trove of uh stealings and 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 we'll get ready for a new economy that will end also with a recession king griffin himself said that every economic uh cycle ends with a recession and it shouldn't but because the game is structured the way that it is yes it's always going to be non-stop over leveraging pushing it down the line and uh, down the line all the way until there's no more pushing and then after that some people will chalk up the loss the taxpayer will ultimately be the ultimate loser and then the people who were automatically already rich just got so much richer and and by 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 stealing the money from the uh 99 percent because that's who's ultimately going to pay it when the government and this is why i always said when the government rolls out a bailout for the entire market in my opinion in my humble opinion who do you think this is why i've always said that the 99 percent, the taxpayer is going to be paying this at the end who do you think after that cash is paid out and we are gone. We got our MOAS and many other areas in the entire market uh, got dealt with and all that stuff. Guess who would have to, re how do we rebuild? We rebuild by higher taxes. That's how it's going to happen. And the economy, yes, will surely get back up again, unless there is like World War III um, looming. That no one can talk about, no financial... Uh, advisor or non-financial advisor as i'm not a financial advisor but no one knows exactly how it's going to work out uh as we go forward from this point on out but besides that a full government bailout makes us happy and makes the other non-investors uh the rest of the 99 percent completely upset unfortunately for quite some time for many years until we rebound at least three to four years in my opinion uh to 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 a better economy and we stop that stagflation and we can start uh growing economically only to do it again perhaps perhaps in the next 10 to 14 years again um but right now we're thinking about today so I thought it was cool. I think that this is a really cool show. It, it makes just about everything. This channel is not bad, actually. It's called the Infographics Show. It's fun. This is gonna this is gonna walk us through, and I think it's a little bit too of uh, too precise as far as um, how like it, it doesn't incorporate in the House of Cards or the game of thrones mindset where many things are happening behind the scenes no this is going by the protocol like how things will operate from day one till the end of the market crash i think it's funny um i think many parts of it is very true and i think it's cool to watch and react to together so before i get to that let me look over here <laughs> jeffrey like i like four play <laughs> I bet you do. <sighs> I know you and me both, Hanzo. It makes me very sick. But what can we say? What can we say? <laughs> What's up, Redwan? Look, I love seeing the family in here. Buckeye Ace. How are you, my fellow Ohioan? <laughs> All right, let's start with this video. And first, I'm going to ask to see if everybody can hear. 
The United States wakes up with millions of well, people getting ready to play a role. I can't hear. Well, in the economy from the workers keeping the retail sector running to the stockbrokers handling huge amounts of why is it breaking up like this uh-oh they're doing the same stuff again the united states wakes up with millions of people getting ready to play a role in the economy from the ah, come on stop this nonsense what is happening here Sorry, people. Sorry, family. Sorry, sorry, sorry. YouTube is just uh, utterly disgusting lately. The workers keeping the retail sector running to the stockbrokers handling. Weirdly, it doesn't do that often, um, Jeffrey. The process shouldn't even be a problem. This is a really powerful laptop. It's actually a gaming laptop. Let's see. The United States wakes up with... There we go. I think it was the headphones. I had to turn them off and turn them back on. It's whatever, but we good now. All right, let's watch it. Millions of people getting ready to play a role in the economy. From the workers keeping the retail sector running to the stockbrokers handling huge amounts of money, everyone plays their part. But today is no ordinary day, because today is the day the U.S. economy begins to collapse. Sorry, let me know, guys. Can everybody hear this perfectly, or do I? Um, I doubt that I can make it any louder. But let's see. Based on what everybody says, can everybody hear? Okay. Hey, Mr. Tim Tuna, how are you, my friend? Nice to see you in here. All right, here we go. We're good to go. <laughs> Jeffrey, the next one is going to have Discord linked to it, okay? And we will bring some of the family members to uh, speak on the live, okay? I actually look forward to that. All right, let's get going. And it'll happen sooner than anyone knows. That's not to say an economic collapse happened out of nowhere. There are warning signs all around, and many economists have been trying to tell people for a long time. Inflation has likely been high for a long time, bordering on hyperinflation. When money has less value, the price of goods and services goes up too. And as salaries rarely rise with them, it becomes harder and harder to afford even basic goods. The economy might have been slowing down in growth as well, with many people on unemployment. The combination of these two factors leads to a condition called stagflation. This puts the government in an unfortunate bind, as the methods needed to lower inflation might lead to higher unemployment. It's a bad state of affairs, but the dam is about to burst. The stock market is the method most people use to gauge the health of the economy. If it's doing well, people are likely to keep investing, but when there's a sudden lack of investor confidence in the market, it can go downhill in a hurry. And it doesn't take much. If a major player suddenly goes bankrupt or a bad economic or global news drops, people start selling their stocks. Tension over current political affairs, like the pending vote to raise the US debt ceiling, only makes things worse. When some people start selling, others follow suit. And the snowball effect starts. Easy to get started, hard to stop. And that's where the panic starts. In a matter of hours, billions of dollars are lost in the US economy. Major companies see their stock value drop precipitously, some losing much of their net worth. And let's not... That's Jeff. <laughs> much love, brother. Let's continue. Forget about the billionaires. Many of them, like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, have their net worth heavily tied up in stock holdings. That means they lose and gain billions of dollars while sleeping. And today, they might just see half their net worth disappear into thin air. It's a disaster for everyone from the billionaires to the small investors who see their retirement savings go up in smoke. Many companies see their entire net worth disappear, 
and by the close of the trading day, countless people are out of work and facing an uncertain future. But it's only going to get worse from here. Day 2 The US government is in a panic. This is the worst day for stocks since 1929, even eclipsing the chaos caused by the Great Recession of 2008. They know something needs to be done, providing aid to keep the economic collapse from getting worse. That's what happened in both 2008 and 2020. After the stock market collapse in 2008, a costly bailout bill was proposed, giving many of the businesses who were about to fold an infusion of cash. And in 2020, as the stock market collapsed due to the coronavirus pandemic, the government provided both aid to businesses who were shut down and direct payments to Americans who were out of work. That should work again, assuming the Republicans and Democrats can work together. No big deal, right? Not this time. A hurried bailout bill designed to stop the stock market collapse is voted down by a narrow margin, with some on the far right not wanting to spend taxpayer dollars and some on the far left wanting a more robust bill. The result is a further loss of confidence in the US economy, complete with a stock market slide to match. It's starting to look much less like a recession and more like depression, and people around the world are paying attention. The stock market has lost more than 10% of its value in only two days, and everyone who relies on the US government for money is starting to get worried. That includes Americans and those abroad. Do you see, guys, so far that this is a perfect, like, um, what I like about this video uh, and why am I even sharing it with you guys? Um, it, it's it's breaking it down, like, in day-by-day -day format and stuff like that. Now, it doesn't necessarily need to happen exactly just like this, but most of this stuff is true. It does happen all of a sudden, and within a day, you're talking about the next day, the whole entire economy is 10% down. And we're already thinking about the major indexes being like plummeting. So like, that's why when people are, sometimes they're even asking me like, Hey, look at this. Is the stock market crashed? Has the mar stock market crashed yet? My answer is no. The crash doesn't look like this, where it's like slow increments going down slow and s slowly. I mean, it could be it could be a new way of of, of game or foreplay as <laughs> Jeffrey likes, uh, but normally it doesn't. It happens exactly like what this video is showing right here right now, in steps or day by day. This gets a little more interesting. I want you guys to pay attention to like the fact that this happens very quick and it's over also extremely quick within days. Uh, and I believe somewhere in amongst uh, between those lines, this is where we will uh, draw our uh, or engrave uh, our initials into the stone. Broad. The U.S. government runs a deficit, a massive one, and many of those dollars are owed abroad. The U.S. national debt right now is a whopping $30 trillion. And as the U.S. economy continues its free fall, that'll have a global fallout. The U.S. dollar declines in value quickly and many of the creditors are worried they'll never get their money back. So some might decide to call in their debts while they can, to which the US might start by saying, I'm good for it, man, I'll pay you next week. But it's not just the big economic players who feel the damage created by the collapse. As businesses shut down due to the stock crash and resulting bankruptcies, more people start to find themselves out of work. They worry where their next meal will be coming from and what would happen if society breaks down as a whole. As night falls on the United States for the second time in the midst of a massive economic collapse, many people look at the news and say, we better get out there tomorrow and pick up some supplies, just in case. And that might just make things worse. Day 3 The start of the trading day is 9.30 a.m. and most people heading to the stock market floor look like they're heading to an execution. No surprise, things look grim from the moment the trading starts, but elsewhere there's already chaos. Grocery stores around the country are seeing a surge in buyers, emptying shelves similar to the way they did in the early days of the pandemic. The sense of uncertainty has driven people to worry about shortages, and that means they're going to create those shortages themselves by stripping the shelves. Soon news footage starts coming out and it's not good, because when people are in a panic, they act out. The first footage shows two old women brawling over the last pack of eggs. Next, a video comes out of a man punching out a supermarket manager because she tells him they've run out of meat. Shots of people looting and running out without paying are common, and robberies in the parking lot start cropping up as well. Who's going to be punching this, the store manager here because they're out of meat? <laughs> Put that in the comment section. I hope nobody does. Nobody in this family would do such thing.
By the time evening falls on the U.S., several major supermarkets and big box stores have been looted, which means they aren't going to be open tomorrow. But hey, at least they're not on Wall Street. The overall losses have fallen to around 20% of the overall stock market in only three days. The panic has grown to an apocalyptic level, and people are starting to ask, should the stock market open tomorrow? Historically, major events have led to temporary halts in trading. Assassinations of presidents, outbreaks of major wars, collapses of major businesses have led to shutdowns, and the 9-11 terror attacks led to a six-day halt. Temporary halts prevented massive sell-offs during the coronavirus shutdown, but it couldn't stop the damage. Stock market halts can also be triggered at three thresholds – negative 7%, 13%, and 20%. And as the market crosses the third threshold, powers that be say, shut it down. So, the stock market won't lose any more dollars tomorrow. But will that solve the problem? Day 4 People have started realizing this is bad, and it's not going to get better anytime soon. Much like the last morning's panicked grocery shopping, people are worried about another shortage today – money. Most people don't keep much cash on hand, instead keeping all their money in the banks and relying on credit cards to do much of their shopping. But the fear makes people seek out something a little more reliable, so they head to the bank and do some larger-than-usual withdrawals. And once again, they're far from the only ones. Footage comes out of lines snaking in and out of bank drive throughs clogging traffic. Many people are withdrawing their entire life savings, and banks are running out of cash on hand, forcing them to turn people away. As it becomes clear that this panic isn't abating, many banks start to put withdrawal limits to avoid having to close down and to make sure everyone maintains some access to their account. It could be worse. During the Great Depression, many banks went under entirely, and many people lost their life savings as a result. Since then, banks have been insured by the government to prevent that from happening again, as long as the US government is in semi-functioning order. And that's not something we should ever question, or is it? With the government failing to pass a relief bill, the president has been reduced to passing executive orders. He's tried to unlock some emergency funding, but his powers are limited and the bleeding doesn't seem to be stopping. He's ordered the leaders of both parties back to the negotiating table to hash out a bipartisan bill, but both have come to the table with their own demands and aren't in a compromising mood. Making things worse, he spends most of the day fielding angry calls from other world leaders. They've been watching the news and they're concerned about what they're seeing. Is the US economy on the verge of collapse? Right now, everything's in a holding pattern, but… You're right, Charlie. I remember and when those two old ladies were uh, fighting over that toilet paper. You're right. <laughs> remember Tickle Me Elmo fights? <laughs> I haven't seen that, no. <laughs> Jeffrey, nobody wants to borrow any of the... <laughs> I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> it's about to get worse. Day 5 The scariest thing about Day 5 of the American economic collapse isn't what's happening, it's what isn't happening. The stock market is staying shut and no one seems in a hurry to open it again. Many of the banks that dealt with the cash rush yesterday are staying closed too, with some making people arrange meetings to do withdrawals in person or putting strict limits on the amount that can be taken out. Many smaller banks are just keeping their doors closed and not allowing anyone to withdraw money. Grocery stores are reinstating pandemic-era policies, only letting a small number of people in at a time, and by the time people do get in, most of the shelves are empty. But they say there's no scarier words than, I'm the government and I'm here to help. Congress wasn't able to pass a relief bill yet, but they're still negotiating, debts are coming due, and countries outside the US are starting to wonder if the US has a handle on things. They don't, but the president doesn't want everyone else to know that. The first priority is an infusion of cash to start paying off bills, and the best way to do that is by printing a lot of money. An executive order has the Federal Reserve putting cash on the printer, and the US is able to take care of some pressing issues, but that has a nasty side effect, diluting the US dollar and control. There we go. You see, you hear that? That right there is the moment that I am waiting for, as I've been alluding to you guys, like, for how long now? In, 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 in this upcoming February, it'll be, or January, it'll be a year, a full year of busting out videos. And uh, for me, it's even more, what's more important or more amazing is I got to form a family with all of you beautiful apes in here. Um... And ever since then, I was telling you guys that this, like, this is the way that it will happen in, in this such sense. So, hypothetically speaking, if we were to hit those moments where in day three of a stock market or day two, uh, 
you know, when the <laughs> it officially hits and starts to crash. The when when wh whether they let it go that way or not, I doubt that they can evade any of this. Uh, however, whether they can avoid the crash or not, the end result is going to be the same. All these banks are over leveraged. And the only thing that's keeping them around is those repo and reverse repo operations in the trillions of dollars on a daily base. That has got to stop. That can't continue. Our debt ceiling is only going to keep rising and rising and rising. And we're on the forefront of wars and all that stuff. Well, go figure why we're in the forefront of wars. Because money needs to be made. War makes money, people. This is the oldest, one of the oldest tricks in the book, uh, besides another trick. <laughs> I know, Jeffrey, your twisted mind is going to jump right on it right away. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's wars make money. In some cases, lose money. But in many cases, uh, in the victor's case, it's always making money. Uh, because that winner has access to all the spoils of that region that they have either invaded or fought with and overpowered. Uh, and once the money is made, that will ultimately be brought back. Like, imagine, think back on this. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but there is this, like, since back in the 1970s or 80s, there was this, like, 40 million or... Yeah, like 40 or 200 million dollars that we uh, withheld from Iran. And uh, the, the, in order for them to get that money from us, we, they had to go along with the sanctions and the things that we've bestowed up on them. And even when they went through with that, we still said, told them, like, go F yourself. You're not going to get any money. Um, you see, that right there is what I'm looking at. Who's going to come and talk to the biggest bully in the, on the block or the most powerful person in the area? Who's going to come? If, if countries were an area or a playground, hypothetically speaking, in that playground, we, as the U.S., we would be considered... Uh, in other words, we are not just considered, we are the, the most dominant dog on that block. And at that point, the, the smaller countries or the smaller people in that playground, how are they going to go and approach that person and say, you owe me? Okay, you can say it, which they have been doing, like other countries, uh, have been doing, but what if I say what are you going to do about it? See, that is what I'm, where my eyes are pointed at. This is why you see countries and many country, uh, other countries that are thinking about joining the BRICS coalition. Why the BRICS are even using that? Uh, why are they formed? You know most of that stuff by now. Uh, through our episodes and when you tie all of these things together it's so many things but they are all part of the th or threads or part of the knit of the shirt that we're sewing together if this was a blouse and we were like old ladies from the early 1900s or even pr prior to that and we were knitting together a blouse for the winter this Every thread is part of that full blouse or that full picture that, that um, eventually portrays the stock market and what we're going through on the global scale as well. So who's going to force the top dog to pay what they owe on that uh, ceiling and that, that, that global ceiling that we have, our national debt that's over $30 trillion easily now, by now? Um, uh, it, 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 there is nothing that can make us answer to that except either us or, unfortunately, an all-out, uh, you know, God forbid, nuclear war. So, and we're 
hearing a lot about that stuff. So hopefully, I don't know. Jeff, do you have a bunker? Adrian, do you have a bunker? Got room for uh, a family? <laughs> the entire family. We have to have at least one person in a family that has a bunker that can fit, uh, you know, the family in it, at least. <laughs> If, if 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 space is limited, you go and see A B B one of those people that um, will say, "Please take my siblings, just take them, just take my my sister, just take my brother, please." <laughs> Hopefully, we don't see any of that stuff, guys. Um, let's continue with this video. Contributing to an already brutal inflation number. We're not quite at Zimbabwe level yet, where they printed billion dollar bills and people needed to show up to stores with wheelbarrows of cash, but economists are getting nervous. And a far bigger crisis might be just around the corner. The United States debt ceiling is the key to keeping the machine running, and the US usually runs a heavy debt. And when they don't have the money on hand to pay for something, they just borrow more. The government sets a limit on the amount of debt the country can carry, and periodically they have to vote to raise it. That deadline is sneaking up fast, and while the congressmen are debating on what a relief bill should look like, this might be an even more pressing concern. Because if the debt ceiling doesn't get raised, the US defaults on its debt, and that's when things get really bad. Day 6 Congress has been called back to vote on raising the debt ceiling, and the whole country and the world is watching with bated breath. If they pass the bill, the US will be able to find some creditors to tie them over until the economic crisis passes. If it fails, default will come almost immediately on a segment of non-bond US debt, further undermining confidence in the economy and sending not just the US markets, but the world markets into a panic as the world's largest economy continues to convulse. With the stakes high, surely a clean bill can be passed to give the debt ceiling a temporary boost or at least pass a temporary dispensation, right? Nothing's ever so easy in Congress. It's clear the tensions from the relief bill are spilling over from the minute the debate begins, with multiple congressmen stepping up to raise objections to the bill or offer amendments that are only loosely related to the matter at hand. Arguments fill the halls of the House of Representatives, and making things worse, the controlling party only has a five-seat margin, with around 10 hardline members who often disagree with leadership. They need 218 votes to pass raising the debt limit, but the final bill has multiple poison pill amendments that have angered both the base and radicals. And when the vote roll is called, it falls short with only 210 votes. And the entire world watches <laughs> as the United States is about. I like how in this show, they like 210. Um, I mean, if, if push comes to shove and we get down to that point in, in time, and that really does happen, uh, this infograph infographics show would have a lot of questions to answer, especially from AB. It's like, how the hell did you figure that it was 210 exactly uh, that we're uh, going to vote for it in favor of it, and we're going to be short? Um, and by the way, Shirley, it was shot in September 2nd. Uh, I just like, with this infographics uh, channel show, they share similar their entire other videos are similar. So like uh, they would have episodes about if World War III was to happen, they will do it in the same manner as they're doing in this video. Day one, day two, day three. Oh, China fires at Vietnam, blah, blah, blah. You know, stuff like that, hypothetically speaking. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, 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 I love this channel. Sometimes I want to, you know, get entertained late at night watching something. Uh, and some of these things are entertaining, you know, it's, it's good to broaden up our horizons. And again, this channel, uh, I like their work. I'm pretty sure they put a lot of effort into uh, their production. So give them support. Let them know. And let them know where, where you guys found out about them from. About to default on a portion of its debt as of midnight. Around the world, in stock markets that are still operating, People start selling off their shares of American companies. The American dollar continues to decline rapidly, and the exchange rate becomes brutal for Americans looking to spend money outside of the country. And around the world, various powers start to sharpen their knives as the U.S. looks weaker than it's been in over a hundred years. Could this be the end of the United States as a great power, or will it be another economic bump in the road? A whole lot of people are waiting to find out. Day 7 As the economic crisis enters its first full week, the president is not happy. He's already called up the leaders of both parties, reading them the riot act, and then watched with dismay as the clock rolled over and America officially was unable to pay its debts. 
He spent the rest of the early morning on the phone with allies, assuring them this was only a temporary problem and they'd get their money in short order. Some, like most of Europe, were understanding, although rumblings in the streets of Europe was that doing business with America was not a good proposition right now. But other countries were less understanding. China, the single biggest US creditor, wasted no time, and reports started circling the globe of outposts of US companies being placed under Chinese control and US ships being detained at Chinese ports. The president had several tense phone calls with Chinese leadership, but the Chinese were cagey and wouldn't admit that there was an official policy of seizing US assets, although they wouldn't deny it either. And in the throes of a massive economic crisis at home, the US wasn't looking to add an international crisis to that. So the president had little choice but trust China's word and slink away quietly. Back on the home front, things were about to go from bad to worse. A week into the crisis, many companies were struggling with a massive cash flow problem. Many owners had seen their company's value drop like a rock or had problems getting the cash they needed to grow their business. Expansion plans were put on hold, planned loans were canceled by timid lenders, and thousands of small and mid-sized businesses had seen their narrow profit margin disappear and were forced to close up shop when it was clear they would not be able to make this month's rent. And that put tens of thousands of new people out of work and on the unemployment rolls, causing massive backlogs in the systems. Tensions are rising and people don't know where their next paycheck will come from. That's a recipe for a tinderbox about to explode. Day 8 One area hasn't suffered much in the economic disaster, social media. As the pandemic grows, everyone with access to the internet is using social media to vent and make their own suggestions for what to do, and everyone seems to hate every other idea. Political tensions are higher than ever, and everyone seems to agree on one thing. It's the government's fault. All it takes is one spark to make things boil over, and this comes when a video goes viral of an interaction at a supermarket. An old woman with a basket of groceries finds that her credit card has been declined and is roughly handled by security when she begs them to let her take the food anyway. That sparks a brawl in the store with customers brawling with security and later police. The footage spreads around the world in a matter of hours and the public is not happy. It starts as localized riots around the scene of the initial fighting, but soon people in cities and suburbs around the country are taking to the streets. Some are ransacking supermarkets in a stepped-up version of the initial food wars. Others are taking their frustrations out on government buildings, looting stores, or brawling with the authorities in the streets. The police are out in force, trying to maintain order, but some find themselves outnumbered. And others aren't interested in fighting with ordinary Americans in a panic over the economy. The public feels like the government isn't doing anything. And that's something that cuts across all political lines. And one figure is taking more of the heat than anyone else. When a mob of protesters starts gathering at the White House, the Secret Service keeps an eye on it nervously. After all, protesting is legal. But when they start approaching the fence and tossing things over it, they spring into action. The Secret Service quickly tries to disperse the crowd, but several agents are injured by tossed bottles. They fight back, arresting some protesters and injuring others. And the president is quickly ushered down to the White House bunker. The crowd is eventually dispersed, but it's clear something has unleashed, and it's not going away anytime soon. And the rest of the world has noticed too. Day 9 The footage of American cities and suburbs in flames has gone viral around the world, and the president has given a shaky speech from the bunker calling for peace. To put it lightly, it didn't raise anyone's confidence about the state of things. States have begun calling up the National Guard to restore order, but reports are coming in of guardsmen refusing their orders. After all, they might be facing off against their own loved ones, and many of them are also looking at their bank accounts, terrified of what's happening. Even more businesses choose to close down after last night, some suffering serious damage in the unrest, and others not wanting to expose themselves to the riots if they kick off again. And some radical solutions are being proposed. So what's more important, the United States' economic health or the country staying a democracy? Powerful members of both parties have called for the president to declare a state of emergency and take extreme measures, including seizing the assets of some of the country's most powerful billionaires. After all, those several hundred billion dollars might come in handy. Of course, they probably can't agree on which billionaire should be first in line, probably the one they disagree with the most. But one isn't waiting to find out. Word starts getting around that Elon Musk took a private plane to Canada <laughs> overnight where he still has citizenship. And he's not the only one losing faith. Word starts spreading around the world of more and more American assets being seized by other countries. It continues in China, but other less powerful countries are joining in. Even the US's allies and the EU and the Anglosphere are sounding increasingly agitated about the situation, demanding answers from the president as the US dollar keeps inflating and the political situation gets increasingly volatile. Around the country, those well-versed in financial matters decide to get what they can while the dollar still has some value and many try to trade their cash in for commodities with a solid value, like gold. But will gold even be worth anything in the event of a complete economic collapse? Day 10 
Most people have lost faith in the United States' ability to pull itself out of this economic crisis anytime soon, and it's looking more like a full-on collapse than a recession or depression. The dollar has plunged to an all-time low around the world, thousands of businesses close by the day, and the public is in a panic. The president addresses the nation again, announcing emergency executive orders keeping the stock markets closed and instituting strict limits on cash withdrawals to prevent another bank run. However, he doesn't announce any of the far-reaching radical moves some wanted, although many say it's just a matter of time. All around the world, a massive ripple effect begins to emerge. Even the US's closest allies see a grim trend. Pending details with American companies are called off, ongoing projects are put on hold, and branches of American businesses abroad start to shut down due to the contraction of the US economy. Many online markets stop taking the dollar altogether because it's too volatile to make a reliable currency as it declines by the day. The seizure of American businesses and ships in less friendly countries continues, but the US is too preoccupied to care at the moment and many American citizens abroad start to head home. Not that home is looking all that inviting. As the public starts to prepare itself for a prolonged economic crash and possibly a total collapse, what will they need? The hoarding we saw in the first days wasn't exactly productive, but longtime preppers have a plan for the worst case scenario. They're stocking up on food with a long shelf life, water filters to ensure a supply of clean water, clothing for the winter, tools including axes that will allow them to cut wood for fire and serve as a weapon in a pinch, first aid kits, battery operated radios and flashlights in case the power goes out. Most of these are worst case scenario items for total societal collapse rather than an economic collapse, but who knows where we're headed. Is there a way out of an economic collapse? That heavily depends on what the government does. Some countries like Venezuela and Zimbabwe doubled down on faulty policies that led to hyperinflation and greater isolation from the world. Others like Argentina were able to rebound from defaulting on their debt by negotiating with their creditors and restructuring their debt. It was a long, hard four-year depression, but they eventually started rebounding economically and came out of the default. They just needed to work together and establish savvy policy. Good luck with that, Congress. Want to learn more about what happens when it all goes south? Check out what happens to a country. Alrighty, guys. So again, this channel is called The Infographics Show. If you want to go and watch some of their other videos, feel free. Back to this. Here's where this channel, at least in their video, while it's entertaining, and I like the trend of the day by day, and if you put, paid attention, it only took nine days for all that stuff to develop the way that it did. Um, here's the thing, guys. The one thing where this channel, that's why I said is before the video, that's a little bit optimistic, even with the delivery. And what is forgetting to remember is when we go through a stock market crash, the horrifying castrating effect, cascading effect, not castrating. <laughs> Jeffrey? <laughs> uh, the cascading effect globally is magnified. L magnified. So, other countries where in this show he was say saying that you know other countries are going to lose trust in the dollar and blah 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 other countries this is why i specifically read that article earlier earlier about the cur other currencies are falling under how people in cairo or people in england or all over the globe are not able to go through we don't even have 28 percent uh, inflation while it could be but we we're not like as we have it bad that article that i read off to you before this video was about so much worse that article showed so much worse you're talking about people sending their wife and kids into the village hundreds of miles away so that they can avoid uh so they could survive while they stay behind in the city to work two jobs and live in mass shelter, uh, where many people are living in the same apartment, we're talking about like 10, 15 people living in a one or two bedroom apartment, to be able to uh, afford living, not, make it, like, not, not making it, but to just afford living. That's no way to live. But in that show, it shows that it's just basically the U.S. having that crash and like everywhere else is fine. No, it's going to be way worse than that.
And that's why you see where the dollar is right now. This is the way that we make, like Argentina, for example, toward the end of the video where it says, hey, it restructured the debt, its debt and all that stuff. It restructured it with what? This is why I say, like normally, um, and I'm not going to say it exactly in terms because I don't want any political uh, <laughs> stuff to, uh, to, be, uh, to be involved in, but I'll put it this way. If I want your house, but you don't want to sell your house, and I'm not even going to approach you about selling your house because then you know my intent. The better way to get your house without even having to buy it is by coming to you and say, hey, you need any money? You would say, no, I'm good. I don't need any money. But, okay, well, don't you want to get, this is free money for you right now. Interest rates are very low on it. You could take this money and flip it and buy 10 houses. Sell them, pay back the debt, and you got you got like a few million dollars on the side as well. You're going to be like, you know what? That sounds like a good idea. You take the money. Next thing you know, what we're having right now, what's going on right now, dollar going up, all other currencies that are pegged to it or not, because the dollar is the major currency of the globe, goes is plummeting down. Now you have to pay your monthly payments as expected, but you're having wildfires happen in, in, within your backyard, in your own home. So you're like, oh my God, not only do I have to make this payment, but I have to pay it a lot with a lot more money because the dollar is more expensive now because I got to transfer my money into, uh, first, I have to switch it over to U.S. dollar, but my currency is much less now pegged to the dollar. First, I have to convert to dollar, then pay, but what I used to pay with this much, now I got to pay this much just to pay the same amount that I'm expected to pay every month. And eventually, as they say, if you keep playing with the fire, you're going to get stung by it. Eventually, you're not going to be able to make, or you're going to default on one of these payments. And at that point, that's where I come in and say, you know what? I'm going to take over the house. You can't make your payments. I'm going to take your house. Should have been better with your finances. What did I finally get? My initial objective. I finally got what I wanted. I got the house that I wanted. So if you take that example and you apply it onto the political global picture, you'll get to, you you'll understand my point you the, the, or the point that I'm trying to make. Um, so yes, while I do think it's going to be exotic and crazy, yeah, we will see old ladies hitting each other and stuff for eggs and people can't afford food, a lot of crime, surging, theft, uh, petty stuff happening left and right. But in the same time, you I want you to keep in the back of your head that it's going to only be magnified overseas. It's good to be an American. I'll just put it that way. It's good to be an American, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and I wish every human on this entire planet, on God's given earth, uh, nothing but, but the best... At the end of the day, we're all we got as far as humans. Uh, no flag is going to differentiate me from someone else. Neither will theirs differentiate them from me. Uh, the only thing that will differentiate us is their views. So if your views are about something other than being a humanitarian, then I will reflect them back on, onto you and you will be dealt with accordingly. Um, in my world, that's how I go about things. But as far as most important thing for me is all about humanity because at the end of the day we are all the same uh once once you once you take the skin off so hopefully everybody can see the same thing um so so now i want you guys to remember you saw even in that show that segment where the president 
eventually kept urging until they got the feds to do the federal bailout. That wasn't the end of the issue. That was the end of our issue. That's what I want you to pay attention to. We get the bailout money because we are going to be within that bailout. Uh, because the bailout is going to come from many financial institutions, specifically banks, falling under. And in order for to keep capital on the block, the feds have to turn on the printing machines to supply these banks, which they've been doing anyways. They're just putting a, a price tic a ticket on what is going to be for the entire country besides the stock market and the major squeezes that who knows, perhaps are ensuing uh, that we're in. Um, may God and all the fortunes be in our favor. But when these in institutions fall under, these printer machines come on, we get the money that we need. That's still, this is why I said the 99% will ultimately pay for it because eventually with taxes get higher and things get more dire, we would have our money but what, at what cost and what will it look like after? Now, if it's 2008 like-ish, uh, again, I feel so bad because it's going to be, this is going to be 20 times worse than 2008. Uh, a lot more homeless people that had homes, a lot more jobless people, a lot harder for people to get money. We will have money, so we will have the chance to do good if any of you want to. I intend to, obviously. Uh, may God not, uh, or may the Lord never make anyone in need of anyone else except themselves and their own power of will. But in case that's the case, then that's when your true grit is in question. What are you going to do when you see your fellow neighbors uh, struggling to to make ends meet as far as even surviving to eat? What are you going to do when you see not only your neighbors, your fellow countrymen and women? Children not being able to get their uh, necessities to go, go to get by. Uh, we already have a very terrible pandemic in homelessness. This, these events are only going to magnify these uh, situations. And what are we? Those four, three o'clock in the morning. 1-800 numbers to help people in other continents, whether Africa or uh, Asia or wherever. Those are only going to be more and more magnified. You're going to see a lot of scam uh, callings. Oh, and it doesn't necessarily need to be like very easy for you to spot. It could be as simple as... Uh, it could be it could be as de deceiving as just put your email right here, and after that, some way somehow they'll hack your computer to try to get access to your number, your card numbers, and stuff like that. Like if you're right now in your life, if you're if you're using if your alert level is at five out of ten, in those days it's going to be at thirty or hundred out of ten. On every little thing that you possess or you have or how you go about your life, it's going to be chaotic. Yeah, you, there will be a lot of space uh, for leisure, uh, for people with money. Again, uh, you'll be able to enjoy the, 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 the fruits of it. Again, we don't, remember this. It's not like we're stealing money or taking money from the economy. The government is going to make it out to be like this. The common citizens, the 99%, the overall the rest of the 99%, the non-investors in the market, specifically into our plays, uh, hypothetically speaking here, these people are going to blame us. They're going to look, when there's a lot of debt madness and a lot of uh, caps, like when everything is capped, when when people don't have access to the necessary, uh, nece uh, necessary things for them to live or even the things that they use to get by in life and not have the conditions of the life that they're used to, there will be a lot of anger. And the first anger will be dispossessed at our cost, on us. Why? Because we're the easier people or tier 
that the rest of the 99% can reach because we are from amongst the 99%. Yeah, maybe our brackets will change at that moment, but we were around them. You're going to have family members who are not. Remember all these people that were mocking us uh, and all that stuff? Uh, like even family members, friends. Forget the shills, the people that you do know that are not shills, but they're just laughed at our way of investing. Uh, what we go through and what we do and what we're after they call some of them call it rainbows some of us some of them call it dumb money that we're stupid and all this stuff so when these things happen those very same people are going to turn on to us because they know what we were into and they know what had happened to us and it's going to make it on the news the media is going to eat that up they're going to want the, the the institutions and these hedge funds and these media outlets are going to want to put us on that front row seat so that the entire country and uh, planet can see who just got completely wealthy when they just got completely broke. So obviously you will need to take care of your uh, money. You'll need to take care of yourself, your family, Position yourself when time when time comes uh, very swiftly and very, very aggressively and with a lot of brain cells. And then whatever it is that you, are in, uh, that you wanna do or you have in the back of your head that you wanna do, whether via helping other people in those dire days and moments and, 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 and hardships, uh, or form a community that helps the rest of the community. Hey, we're all for it. Who knows if push comes to shove and this was ever to happen like that, exactly in that sense, as I'm saying this throughout this whole live and previous ones, um, don't feel like you're taking money. Don't let anybody when that time comes, make you feel like you stole from them. They're broke because of you and all that stuff. No. When we were being mocked, it was for the rest of the world, it was okay for us, for them, it was okay for them to laugh at us and the idea of us losing our entire money because to them, we were stupid for dumb money, for investing in something that is going to be crashing, something that's going to go bankrupt, quote unquote, and something that we will lose our entire life savings over. So for them, it was okay at that moment to go ahead and think about us and no one has reached out to know any of us to say, hey, are you okay? Are you surviving? Are you all right? That's it. Water under the bridge. But when the opposite, if the opposite was to happen, then we're going to be automatically portrayed as uh, the people who screwed their lives. And they will have the numbers because majority of the 99% did not invest in this movement. At that point, it doesn't make sense for us to go ahead and rub it in their face, even though they did, <laughs> honestly. And there's no sides to this. We're all, all the same. They just don't have the same conviction that we, you do, that we do. And when things are happening at that point, it doesn't matter to make a point. People are going to try, try to look for their next meal. So leave the pettiness behind, make sure you're protected, your family is protected, and do whatever it is that your heart desires at that point. Every man and woman is free, uh, but I intend to be a major Aristotle and within the community. If every person does it within their own community, then I think it will be a much, much smoother ride uh, back into transition and uh, away from like how the 2008 recession happened, you know, or events caused. Eventually, lives were, yeah, lives were screwed, but life goes on. And we went back on and it, somehow we pushed the clock down more till this point now, and we're here. So from all of this life itself, you have seen that all of this, whether the articles or that, you know, that fun video, 
what I always try to break down and what I'm always saying about the bailout that will come to get us paid from the printing machines, uh, I don't see this thing taking like, you know, very, very long. As I also alluded to before, said 2022 is like 2007 to 2008. So will it be 2022? I sure do hope so. Will it be 2023? It looks like it's 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 the 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 craziest of the craziest is lining up for it to happen within those moments within either the end of 2022. I doubt it because there's election coming uh, this upcoming month, permit terms, um, and you know they're gonna want to spice things up and make it seem like what the run that we're having now perhaps. Is t being tied up to it um and instantly right after that i believe in the sometime in the beginning of this upcoming year i mean this is so horrific guys companies right now are doing and banks i need you to keep thinking about this they're even these hedge funds are answering back to their shareholders imagine keep this in the back of your head 2021 came by and we remember Citadel sending out a letter to all their investors telling them they can't withdraw their money. We're around that same time again, a year later. Could you imagine the amount of catastrophic losses that most people, uh, it doesn't matter what hedge fund they're in, are gonna endure? Could you imagine the amount of destruction because the the idea of these shorts or these hedge funds look where their money is they're not just invested or short on amc or gme or the meme stocks they're heavily short on these meme stocks but they're also they're over leveraged in their other positions throughout the rest of the stock market they they have to be on some blue chip stocks. They have to be in any of the stock. And if you go in the stock market and look, choose any stock on the market and look at it, except, you know, any, 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 any either blue chip stock or a growth stock, go look at any of these stocks and see how down is it year to date. My point that I'm making to you is that all these holdings that they have, all these shorts have, are leveraged by the rest of their positions in other sectors in the market. And when the entire rest of the market, it doesn't matter what sector it is, is in the red, let alone really heavy in the red, what does that inflict to you? What does that tell me? And what does that tell you? That tells me that all these shorts, not only are they doing so much illegal crap, to keep us where we at whatever it is that they're doing but look at the overall big picture here they're also invested in the rest of the market so when their portfolio falls do you remember what they were doing to people last year who were invested in amc and had options or uh cash accounts they were basically invested in other plays and as their accounts kept falling and this is a smaller picture here kept falling because the other positions are dropping, dropping. They got over margined for their options and they were liquidated and forced to uh, basically sell their positions to cover their margin. These hedge funds are similar, but the only difference is that short positions are going to be over margined. They already, already, in my humble opinion, again, this is just my opinion, not financial advice. My humble opinion, I think that they were over leveraged many, many, many months ago, a year and a half, two years ago. It's so refreshing and amazing and yet sad. It's amazing how all those three go together in my head of what we're lined up for. Yes. I do believe we will get filthy freaking rich. I share with you, not just my opinion, but what led me to my opinions. These, when you put them all together, and I've been saying this for over 
almost a year now. This is the big picture. This is the big picture over in, in a nutshell. It's it's something is bound to happen. We're going to we're knocked on the door and we're going to hear the answer I believe really soon. Um be careful from these small runs in markets that does not mean necessarily we're in a bull market again. Uh no matter what the numbers are, remember the more lucrative, the more greed, which means you need to have more fear. The more fear means you need to have more greed, thanks to Mr. Uh, Warren Buffett for such a saying. However, um, when everything is, is, is at a high, we know the state of the world, we know the state of the economy, we know the over leveraging on many counts, whether hedge funds, shorts, banks, brokers, I broke all this down to you many, many months ago. Literally, back when most YouTubers were out there saying, oh, we're going to squeeze next week. I was telling you why the whole entire financial system is seems or is perhaps one on one page together. All of them are colluding together because they're all in the same hot seat. And the only Lord Savior for all of them is the Fed's. And it's not about being just a savior. Most of these people, I know that they're thieves. These people are thieves. These hedge fund managers and all that stuff. Most of these people have had ample amount of time to go ahead and take their money and try to send it over to overseas accounts or crypto accounts. And you can't forget. Remember the first person that told you, and I don't even think anybody paid attention to it from my fellow compadres, YouTubers, uh, Citadel is working on yet again. They're working on becoming a market maker in the crypto sector. So, and you remember many months ago when I broke down why the whole crypto crash started happening, who benefits from it, who was behind it, allegedly, as it was said, BlackRock and Citadel, um, a market maker can't come in and not have more uh, liquidity or more in their position possession. So with that crash, they were able to accumulate more, and they did it via Luna, which was very insidious the way the way they did it. Uh, which through Luna, they were able to cascade um, a crazy ripple effect of uh, crypto market crash starting with Bitcoin all the way down, and now they can accumulate more. Why am I saying this? I could be saying that this is going to crash and it's going to go away, but why am I saying they are accumulating? Because I am the most bullish person, as I've always been, on the crypto. Specific, already implemented and induced ones that have big institutional backing already. Not just any crypto that gets created every day. Uh safe mars or safe jupiter or whatever you get you get what i'm alluding to here guys uh, so think of it like this why would citadel go public securities go public just so that it could sell what was it like a very small amount but that was first in this time ever uh like 1.9 or 3 percent of its company to to other organizations that they're partner up with who happen to be Silicon Valley tech companies, major, major, heavy backing to the crypto realm. One of them, I think, owns Coindesk. They already have the system. They're working on getting approval for it. They already even have obviously the Bitcoin ETFs ready. The new way of the next market crash after this one, let it be in the, uh, within the crypto realm because I think the next market, within the next 12, 15 years, whatever, will be uh, a crash and a flash and a rip in the crypto realm because that's going to be the new market. Um, we shall see. If I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, 
I'm wrong. Hopefully you enjoyed everything that I've brought up to you guys. And I'll take some questions if there is any. Uh, let me see who's in here. KMCC, I'm hoping to be able to pay off my car. Well, I sure do hope so, my friend. Thank you, Shirley, so much, by the way, for uh, pushing out the likes and being an amazing mod. Um, all my mods in here are my family members. You guys, without you guys, I can't do any of this. And without the entire family, I'm nothing. So I owe it to all of you guys. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in and being here. And again, if there's any questions, let me know. The only number I see at 3 a.m., one nine zero zero. Just saying. <laughs> Brian O'Quinn. <laughs> yeah, his wife got, definitely got her hands full with him. Ah. Uh. This is Chase. Yes, they are definitely going to try to blame us. That's not important to me. It's take care of my family. The most important thing is take care of my family. Yes, so shall everyone else. Um, and, and, and you know, whatever it is that anybody wants to do for their community afterwards, that's their, uh, you know, that's their choosing and their uh, talk. I appreciate it, Brother Frankie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do, sir. Kind sir. Uh, good brother is uh, Frankie Muhammad. He's a good brother, and he's constantly been a, uh, a cornerstone in this movement, uh, one of the pillars. And he puts up very valuable videos every day, as, much, as far as I know. Very uh, dedicated. Gives out a good word. Puts out good opinion. About where he's at and he's a, a very good voice for the for the movement um so much love to you brother <laughs> pass me my bags now pretty please <laughs> well how would you like them ma'am would you like them in crypto digital dollars or in gold February 30th, 2023, perhaps? I will not be upset. If it happens in 2023, I, or 2022, obviously, I will still be the, or even 2024, I'll be the happiest man alive. I think soon I want to share with you guys the, uh, Back in June of 2021, you know what? I think I, I'll do it. I'll share with you guys. It's going to take a lot of time to try to, leave, to pull out all the records of uh, trades, uh, specifically option trades that I was doing. And I'll show you guys a segment of the uh, AMC options that I had in 2021 um, and how I was dispersing them. And uh, I exercise some to get obviously even more shares and help make the price surge even further. So I'm going to. I don't like to do that, but for the first time, uh, I'm going to go ahead and share uh, just a few clips of some of the options uh, that I've what I've purchased them for, what I've sold them for in that rip. So. That is true, Mr. Brian O'Quinn. It's always transferred from the impatient to the patient. The most important thing to all of us, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, is that we are going to have what most importantly is the proving factor or the proving point moment to the entire world or the people that we knew in our lives or we know in our lives uh, that we were not wrong. That's the most important thing. Uh, the second most important thing 
Uh, well, as far as important, see, it's not important in general, but it is big for me to tell all the doubters and all the haters, like, you were wrong. We were right, and you were wrong. Uh, I'm not going to rub it in their face. I'm not going to sit there and say, yeah, that's why your shit is screwed up. No. Uh, I would rather l lend a hand than to uh, shove, shove one away. You know? So... But to me personally, to each single one of you, it matters a lot because for the rest of your lives, you're going to always remember there was a time where I went against all the odds, the entire planet, everybody, except a group, a group of what we are portrayed as, as apes. We were the only ones to believe in a cause that the entire planet did not see and did not even wish it to be. And it did happen ultimately. And when it does, that's all that matters is that we, each single one of us, will have that in here and for the rest of our lives. Um, so I can't wait. I can't wait, honestly. Hey, just another ape. What's up, brother? Brother Steven is in the house. Nice to see you, brother. Uh, hopefully all is well. I uh, was speaking to Mr. Steven. He's got some really interesting things going on and he's working on. So whenever he does his next uh, live or maybe we'll do something together here soon, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting uh, to see what he will... Well, uh, he's, he's, he's working on something really great and I wish it nothing but the best and hopefully if there's anything I could help with, I'll be more than happy to. Happy to. Thanks for letting me know yesterday, by the way. Dinette. All right. We're bringing out all the OG family members. AB, I miss you. Did you see the new PM of England talking about CBDC? I didn't see it, but I know it's coming. I know it's coming. The new, we covered the new prime minister of England earlier uh, as, 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 as the, uh, as, as they said that they're going to be uh, they did tax uh, cutoffs and that was only putting band-aids on a deep wound it's not going to shut the wound so it's just for now it's transitory as the feds like to refer to it as uh, <laughs> it is scary but excited about today's run. Yes, uh, be excited. That's your God-given right, of course. As I warned before, be careful, guys, with your emotions. Midterms are around the corner. I warned about this like a few, a few days ago, a week ago. Uh, I did say even a couple weeks ago. Uh, no, not even a couple weeks ago. It was just last week that here in the next few weeks, we're going to have something special. We're in special waters and moments. Um, but be able to tamper your expectations in case. If it doesn't and it continues going, then even better. Let's see. Um, I'm looking at some. Nice run today by Snapchat. I like it. And nice run by uh, Tilray as well. And Iron Net. Yes. Netflix keeps ballooning. Which I like. So is Novavax. Let me see. Mara and Riot are also ballooning. Not too much yet. But almost at their, uh, in my in my respective opinion, I think it's almost to their ceilings. BBIG is still suppressed as bad as possible. Tilray, as I said, had a great run, thirteen percent. Bed Bath and Beyond, amazing run as well, twenty four percent. 
the Asian uh, companies, similar to like Neo, XPIV, and Lee, have also had a little nice rally. Uh, I think we're all in the same basket, but you gotta remember those Chinese companies are on a different. They're we're in the same aisle, we're in the same bracket, but we're in a different lot, like a uh, different lane. Uh, and the only reason is because they're. It, again politics can get induced into this and it could form a tragedy otherwise uh, nio neo is literally one of my most i wish mo uh stocks uh i wish it was not a chinese company that way i wouldn't have to worry about the politics being in in between i'm an in between GME did a good 8%. AMC did a good 6%. See, tamper your expectations, my beloved family members. And remember, Bitcoin broke the 20K mark. Uh, I don't see us doing something freaking crazy more, but we'll see what happens. Remember, tamper your expectations, ladies and gentlemen, and know and try to guess when the next drop is going to be because with all the market conditions, I think that that is inevitable at this point. Danette, <laughs> you've been away for a long time for you to ask this question now. <laughs> Um, uh, it, it all I could tell you as a non financial advisor is to look at the charts, look at where the spy is. If it shows you, even if you don't want to look at the chart, if it shows a dropping effect, it's gonna that means it's gonna be entering into a, that new cycle of going away from the buy mark, like from the green to the red for the entire market. So based on how long this run takes, that's how personally I go about uh, dictating when is the buying and or entry point, whether for calls or for puts or for loading up on shares on any given stock. Um, so the one thing about the SPY, very lucrative, the most amazing uh, ticker to trade for options. Um, in my humble opinion but it's also the riskiest because it fluctuates much 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 faster and way more violent so if for example if this was it's 384 385 right now um if this was not the end of the run are we connected again Hopefully. <laughs> Danette, <laughs> please let me know, ladies and gentlemen, are we reconnected? YouTube try to do the same thing again. Yes, thank God. Um, so yes, uh, so at the end of the day, what I'm trying to get to Danette is if it continues to run by Thursday, for example, and it's in the 90s, 390s, and by Friday it touches 400, your puts that you buy, for example, if you were to do that tomorrow, would automatically be tarnished. Literally tarnished. Unless you're buying out puts that's out a year, but then the premium at that point would mean uh, <laughs> you have... Uh, already hundreds of thousands of dollars you know just to do five or six puts or ten puts on on the spy you get my point i'm over exaggerating the figure but it will be expensive well into the thousands for something that long on the spy so again look at the signs see what or what is not this market is very shifty we would have sometimes we have cycles of green and then red sometimes we have just a day green day and red when the year is all said and done they will weigh it out and say how many green days were there throughout this year trading gear uh and how many red days were there in order for them to say ultimately what kind of year was it was it a bear's year or was it a bull's year um 
So we'll see. I think it's going to be a Bears year at the end of this year, but we are anticipating that anyways. Um, so yeah, I look for the signs. Sometimes I either day trade it, make my options, my puts or calls and day trade it. But sometimes uh, I look for the cycle. And when that cycle shows a sign that it's, yes, it's going to be the new cycle of red, that's when I will more, be more confident and comfortable to buy in back in uh, or buying in those either puts or calls, depending on what cycle. Um, waiting for a black flag. <laughs> Let's see. It, just another ape. AB, would you do three rounds with Islam Makachev for uh, 300 per share in AMC? <laughs> <laughs> I here's the thing I think I will do it for sure because his fighting these guys they're savage him the the Islams the Habibs they're they're savage but they have a good heart somehow some way some way somehow so I think he will be okay with uh you know getting me to submit rather than uh, you know, <laughs> breaking an arm or a leg. The problem is, is how do I avoid for three rounds the submission position? Because that's going to be within the first five seconds. It will put me in a submission mode. Um, thank God I'm not in the lightweight division. <laughs> As you can see, <laughs> these guys are different beasts. I've always said it. Um, him, Habib, I love how he was able to bring in. Um, there was a side cage fight that happened with Hamzat Shmaev with uh, Abu Bakr, which is uh, Khabib's uh, cousin. And the very next day, they were all on a, in a video. Habib, Khabib brought them all together and he made a big apology to the entire world and said, hey, we don't look like this. It shouldn't be like this. I'm mad at this. We celebrate today Islam's win as a champion, and soon we're going to be celebrating Hamzat Shamayev. And Hamzat Shamayev was standing next to all, I think it was like six guys, uh, with Khabib, Islam, Abu Bakr, Hamzat, and a couple other guys, unknown guys, I don't know them. Uh, so, so it's, 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 I like that about the guy. He's a natural leader, he's a great person as an individual, and more importantly, um, uh, in my opinion, he's, he's a, he's the goat for finishing and dominating, uh, what, like, you know, all those fights and the way that he went through it as, and now we got the reign of Islam. I knew this was going to happen, by the way. I knew it was going to be a walk in the park. All that hype on Oliveira before that, nothing against the guy was too much of a hype because the, many of those fights where they say he's got the most finishes on the ground and blah, 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 but he himself have tapped out like eight times in the past in his career uh, you can't be the most dominant when you when you get when you tap out eight times that is true and then in the same time he was very close to many of those fights like he was tapped many times like even the justin gaethje fight i thought was very close he got he he he, he gave him a bailout Gaethje gave him a bailout by putting him, getting him in that position to get him to submit. Otherwise, Gaethje was opening avenues in his face. Um. <laughs> but yeah, um, I will do it. I'll do it for the for for the community. I'll I'll, I'll fight with whoever. <laughs> Well, thank you, brother. Thank you for your support. Sogaro, nice to see you, brother. Jeanette, thanks, AB. What do you think about the Fed? Are they going to slow down like the news said? Um, well, I'll do you the courtesy of saying this. We covered this kind of in this live, Jeanette. I know you just came in. Um, I'll tell you this. Whether they pivot this year or not, I do see another at least one rate hike, whether next month or in December, to come in. And it's besides the point for me at this point, because like as far as them 
stopping or selling their palace sheets off. Uh, they this themselves said it's going to take years for that to happen, which I do think that it will start happening after we crash. And then eventually when we're on the way of rebounding, that's when as the economy is growing, they're also selling, unloading their balance sheets because it just looks timely mannered at that time. Uh, well tailored at that point. Um, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. Uh, at the end of the day, the way that I'm looking at this, the rate hikes is no matter what, even that one rate hike, the first one, meant that all all bought people who borrowed money have to pay it back, even if it was just 0.25 or 25 base points. That means they, that gets added onto that loan, which means they would have to pay an extra for paying back that loan versus the previous no fees or damn near nothing, a half a you know, percent or even nothing. So that's where I'm looking at it from that direction or from that angle. Um, come January 2023, there's going to be a lot of meet, meet your maker moments. I, I personally think so. We'll see. Um, Brian O'Quinn, thoughts on a good crypto hard wallet? Well, there was a uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Tell Dog, was it uh, here before, and he um, had he told me about this, and many people have you know said that it was a very good one. It was a good flash drive that you buy from. Uh, it's a Nano S. You could buy it on Amazon. Nano S, Nano X. Um, again, I'm not a financial advisor, so I'm just going with what I think is going to be uh, good, but it doesn't necessarily need to be any good. I think at that point, you're good as long as it's not the broker. So like, if you're one of those people, and I know you're not, but I'm just saying to the overall general, uh, like generally to the rest of the people out there, if you're investing in Robinhood or Webull or whatever, and put aside the whole payment for order flow crap, and you're using crypto as well with them, yeah, uh, you're. In my humble opinion, I could be wrong. In my humble opinion, I think you are asking for your crypto to be lost or taken away. So, if push comes to shove, or if a certain event was to happen. So Nano X or Nano S, look at them. See, the, the more expensive it gets, the more storage you get so that you can get your trading apps um, and, and uh, the blockchain onto them. And then that way your crypto stays with you at all times as long as you don't lose the uh, keywords. Hopefully that answers the questions, brother. Um, just another eight. I'm getting 2.35% interest in my savings account now. And CDs are at an all-time high. Great time to have cash. Yes, indeed, brother. Cash is king. And for sure in these times and moments, uh, as we've seen in that video earlier, guys, you're going to have that when everybody's rushing to the banks, when that moment hits, it's going to be too quick. You're not going to outquick the whole system. Everybody's going to be thinking the same. Everybody's going to try to rush, and they're all going to be at the same time in the banks. Some people will get their theirs out, but eventually the stress will be too much, and banks will shut down. You will not have access to your cash no matter what you have, and you will be at the mercy of the feds rolling out the bailout as soon as possible. So remember, cash is kink. Have some cash that will always take care of your family at least for a few months without the need of having to go crazy all into the bank because if you can't get it there how are you going to feed your family so have what you need besides um you know f storage food or any of that stuff in case of a all-out war or a, cat a catastrophe but have have enough cash to take care of you and your family for a few months who knows just for the what ifs to happen
the net ledger i wouldn't buy it from amazon get it from their website just to be safe like what the same thing yeah uh it's it's again it's it, the, the the flash drive is going to be brand new uh you know whether from amazon or not again yeah the net you're correct it's just to be more safe uh honestly i feel a little more safe with amazon because at least that's somebody that is a bigger entity that i can in case push comes to shove i can sue then um uh, to sue a single company that's not as you know big as as, as amazon but again the, that the net is very well correct as well so at this point you can't go wrong it's just about which one is good um uh, again the only one that i know of that i've heard from my friend was uh tell dog was uh nano x nano s whichever one you want as far as more more uh storage if you want to have a lot more crypto exposure and store a lot of crypto uh think you want to go with the more expensive one you want to go with the s uh, and then see how it goes from there it would be like this It will look like this. See, so yeah. So the X is the bigger one, 149. Um, the S, 79. Yeah. Store NFTs, crypto. Not financial advice and not a paid sponsor. All right, family. It is almost five o'clock. We've been together for a little bit for quite some time. Hopefully you enjoyed the show today. Hopefully when I go I have Friday, I have my appointment with my physician. Eventually they're gonna probably most likely uh, refer me to get an MRI for that knee injury I had in yesterday's soccer game. Two games, so hopefully it's not the worst. I hope it's no ACL tear. It's in that area and uh, we'll see. Life sucks right now as far as movement and getting around. But at all times, I am very appreciative and thankful to the Lord for constantly blessing me with everything. This is all a blessing. And if it comes to the pain of this knee injury, the way I look at it as I'm just paying, maybe God is making me pay off some of my bad sins on this earth while I'm still alive. So I don't have to answer for them when is judgment day. So thank you. Uh, first to the Lord and to the Almighty for, for constantly blessing me and all of the family and everyone else with everything. More importantly, for waking up yet for another day. Um, and besides all that, I also want to thank all the mods. You guys are amazing. You guys are beautiful. And you guys are the best. And you guys, I can't do it without you guys. And lastly more importantly i want to thank the rest of the family you guys you have no idea how much you all mean to me because this movement for me was about wealth exposing bad players and the markets and all that stuff but now personally for me this is just me coming out to you guys it's coming it's become much larger i have made a family a huge family out of all of you guys and I never anticipated for that. I never even thought that things like that would be the case or that's what was going to happen a year ago. So much love, guys. Much love to all of you guys. And Baba Gambino, um, I see your question. A real quick, maybe real quick, is HYMC a good play? Uh, it's, it's, it depends on what we're, where we're going to go into. Depends on what they find in their depositories. They haven't tapped into even barely any 8% of all their land, of all their site. Um, it, it's as far as, as far as long term, the price that it's at, again, I'm not a financial advisor, so it could be a good, it could be bad, but where it's at right now, I think it's a, great company at a great value for long term for short term specifically short squeeze 
uh, potential and all that stuff. It's that, you know, that's that remains to be found. Uh, we will know, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, you just got to always keep your eyes open on many things. You never know when uh, something happens. Like, you know, just like AMC and uh, what's his name? the guy that came in and partnered with also AMC to buy uh, 22% of HYMC and Highcroft, um, you know, that mean that meant that the HYMC needed money in general, cash at some point. That's why they would sell. Otherwise, why would you sell 22% or even more uh, just for AMC alone and more than that even to other investors? Um, depending on what happens globally or in this entire market, that's going to reflect on stuff like that. So personally, I, I, I'm i not in HYMC. Um, yeah, yeah it, it could be a, the play. It could be the thing. It could be the man. But there are so many. There are so many in this. So doesn't mean, you know, I, I per, personally, I can't put money in every stock out there that has potential. I just can put it into what I can. I can compound as much as possible in what I do know or what do I do feel, not know. I do feel, I got to watch my words here. What I do feel have the best shot at that, at doing so. So, yeah, if you're in HYMC, best of luck, brother. Best of luck. Yep, HYMC is a five to 10 year hold. Yeah, just another ape. Uh, yeah, I could see that uh, from a safe perspective, five to 10 years, I could see if everything was to go good, I could see them naturally growing uh, to much higher highs. And if, if, if um, as far as like short squeeze potentials and stuff like that, that's, that remains to be seen. All right, guys, I'll end it with this. As, as I said earlier, thank you to all. Uh, Brian O'Quinn, together we win, divided we lose. That's what the quote that I would end it with. Thank you, sir. Appreciate all of you guys. And I'll be back soon to all of you. The rest of the family, you're in the Discord. Let your uh, feelings known. And I'll be around the corner to see what happens. And soon I'm going to make that live to show you guys uh, some of the past uh, option plays that I've had as far as specifically for that those AMC June 2021. I've shared it with a few people before, uh, but I'll share it with the entire family. You guys will look at them. We'll see what, what they costed me, what I bought them for, what I sold them for eventually. Uh, not, not any show off or thing or any of that. Uh, a scam call, speaking of scam, uh, but but just to show you guys that obviously there uh, I don't want people to say well he always says it but he we don't know it nobody have asked me this nobody have said any of this but I know how a human mind works um, not too long ago I was just accused of some stupid shit so like I always do I show the facts I bring it out A B is no imposter is no drifter. AB speaks his mind and he loves and cares about each single one in the family and the ones that are not anyways. Uh, and pities the stupid ones. And I'll leave that to your own imagination to who that is. Much love to all of you guys. AB Investments.